It's going to be given by Noah Petro, and uh, it's titled Surface Roughness in the SPA. Noah? Of course. Okay, we're going to take a tour through SPA. We're looking at several different data sets, and I, I wanted to start by saying how great these types of meetings are. I'm giving this talk today because of a conversation at this meeting last year with the guy who's talking to the person in front of him not paying attention to me right now. Um, we're basically talking to Bill and Becky and Sarah about what is apparent in some diviner rock abundance data. And Becky and Sarah's work has sort of indicate that SP appears to have a deficit of rocky craters in its interior. So that got me thinking of just, well, what can we do to just push this through and look at all of the different data sets that we have now and see what's going on here? Maybe there's nothing going on. Maybe we're missing something. But I think actually in ends there's something interesting going on. And of course, yesterday in the other uh, room, um, Misha's talk on uh, um, steep slopes on the moon, it was brought up about this roughness or this apparent lack of rough surfaces in SPA or rocky surfaces in SPA. And so it follows nicely from there. And you know, a logical subsequent question is where are the immature craters? And there's going to, you know, there's a lot of work that I haven't been able to do for this, but looking at ages of surface is certainly something that we're going to have to be doing, especially when talking about uh, about SPA. I just want to also, you know, I'm going to show a lot of different LRO data. Um, this is a, a mosaic that uh, the LROC team has produced from the, the, the WAC instrument. Uh, obviously, low sun, and, and there are a number of different um, illumination geometries that have been uh, mosaic together that really, I think, sort of provide some stunning views of the moon that you find yourself, oh, God, that's actually what the moon looks like. Uh, and uh, so I'll be showing a lot of different LRO data sets today. Um, so we're going to use a couple different uh, data uh, products to, to look at roughness. And I, I know that all of these instruments are measuring roughness in slightly different ways. Uh, first, talking a bit about MINI-RF, which of course is, is looking really across the upper meter or two of the, the surface, the radar instrument, uh, which will be measuring blockiness, roughness, surface roughness. Uh, the LOLA instrument, which is of course the active laser uh, altimeter on LRO, um, the five spot uh, beam spots produce a really remarkable data set, and this is a, an RGB composite uh, uh, from Misha's paper on the global uh, surface roughness. So we're we'll looking at SPA using some of the different LOLA products that have been produced, and then uh, focusing in on a small area, and leveraging some work that's been done part of the Rise survey team, uh, looking at a NAC DTM from the interior of SPA, and just what could be gleaned from that. That, that analysis is, is still uh, preliminary, but really being able to integrate kind of what is what are these instruments telling, telling us about the surface? Bring those things, uh, these, these stories together and try to understand not just the history of SPA, but specifically what's going on with rough craters in SPA. So this is just to orient all of our memories about what we're looking at here. This is an orthographic projection, a whack mosaic. The outline of uh, the, the basin is here. Uh, most of the, the figures that I'll be showing in the presentation um, are in this similar projection. So find your favorite crater and then stick with that as we go along. I'll actually also just for a moment highlight some work that the Diviner team is doing on Sokovsky Crater outside of SPA. Um, and they found some very unusual uh, roughness and, and blockiness uh, trends with, S uh, with Sokovsky uh, that uh, Ben Greenhagen is writing up as a paper now. So you know, as we swipe, take this tour, virtual tour through SPA, focus on your favorite craters and sort of see what happens. So I'm going to start by looking. Oh, and also th this is the. Um, a really awesome data set that the, the, the LROC team produced, the empirically normalized reflectance, which is taking months and years worth of WAC data to produce um, you know, essentially an albedo map of, uh, of the lunar surface. And the first thing, obviously, the, the dark interior of SPA stands out. We've known that for a long time. But also, you know, there are all these fresh craters, Jackson to the north, uh, Tycho just here on the other side, all these fresh craters, uh, optically immature craters, but very few inside SPA itself. Uh, Ryder Crater is over here. There's a few small ones. Really no you know, Copernican age large craters in SPA. And that, I'm not sure if that's odd or not, but it's certainly something to, to consider. So let's talk about MINI-RF first. This is uh, part of uh, some work that Josh Cahill did um, looking at the global variations in, in MINI-RF data. And the, this is the uh, circular polarized ratio CPR map. and um, you know, the first thing that jumps out about SPA is that it's virtually indistinguishable from the highlands. Um, and again, this is looking at roughness over the first you know, two meters or so of the, of the lunar regolith. Um, and, and basically what they see in SPA here is that there's 
an apparent increase in scatterers in the, the surface to near subsurface, so you know, upper two meters of surface. Um, there must be you know, centimeter or meter sized cobble scales um, within the regolith. But of course, as we said before, there, you know, other roughness scales will tell us what's actually happening at the surface. So you know, this first constraint is telling us that the, the upper few meters of the regolith within SPA is similar to maybe you know, the northern, the feldspathic highlands here, um, and is generally, quote, rough. It's also somewhat similar to what we see, and you just barely see it here, to what we see in Oriental uh, on the, the limb of this view here. Uh, another product that the Minier F uh, produces is these, uh, this MCHI deconvolution, which basically pulls out um, some of the scattering properties of the surface. A slightly different projection, but here, SPA is, is still in here. And again, you'll notice that SPA is virtually indistinguishable from the Feldspathic Highlands. Um, however, it is a different from what we see here in Oriental. There is a distinction in this deconvolution. Because SPA, the interior of the basin, appears to largely be, quote, blue in color, it suggests that, again, that we have um, you know, a thick regolith with small wavelength scatters on the scale of, one, uh, you know, on the, scale of the wavelength of the, the measurement. Um, again, you see very few radar bright craters within the basin here. Um, so Kofsky shows up glowing um, with roughness. Uh, but again, in inside SPA, very, very distinct. Um, another you know, feature that you might notice within this, this data set, and again, remember one of the important things about Minier F was not intended to do global mapping. So the fact that they were able to get near global coverage is fairly remarkable. Um, you know, they really can't pull out Mare basalts or any of the volcanic units within SPA, and then again, some of the small, uh, smaller fresh craters, but again, not much on the large scale roughness within uh, the, the uh, Minier F data. So um, again, just to reorient ourselves, we're going to start looking now at some of the Lola products. Uh, this is uh, the five spot scale roughness um, map from, from Lola. This was presented at LPSC this past year by Greg Newman, um, and he was looking at specifically you know, using Lola to identify small fresh craters. And you can see um, some of the, you know, this is Ryder Crater again, some very small fresh craters. Notice the interiors of some craters are, are at least rough at the five spot scale uh, in, in Lola's seeing. Uh, we've got uh, Finson and Alder here. Antoniati shows up very, very, uh, the, the rim of Antoniati shows up very, very um, rough to Lola. And uh, DeForest Crater here. Other than that, though, the interior of the basin is, is, is generally smooth at the five-spot five scale, specifically compared to the, 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 the high feldspathic terrain to the north here. So that, you know, that's, to me, that's sort of interesting. That's telling us something about the surface of the basin. That's perhaps not surprising. You have a large basin, lots of impact melt generated, but it's also been sitting at the surface for four and a half or 4.3 billion years. So I perhaps naively would expect that the interior of the basin should actually look, you know, beat up like much of the highlands, but in this case it doesn't. So next I'm going to step through some of the um, uh, roughness parameter maps that were generated by uh, Misha Kreslowski at different baseline scales. And each of these baselines sort of show and reveal different features of the basin that I think are going to be informative. So at the longest uh, baseline map that, that Misha produced at 1.8 kilometers, the, the first thing that stands out is really the distinct nature between the volcanic units within SPA. So, for instance, here in the Apollo Basin, the well-defined uh, Mare units uh, within Ingenai here, obviously in, inside Sokovsky, those, you know, we think of the Mare basalts as being smooth, and at the 1.8 kilometer baseline scale, they are. You'll also notice that, however, there are other sort of larger units that are generally smooth, and some of these have been mapped before as either being Cryptomare or Plains units. Um, it would certainly appear that they're fairly extensive across at least the center portion of the basin, although not pervasive across the entire basin itself. Um, for the most part, the rest of the interior of the basin is generally indistinguishable from the, the surrounding highlands. We go to a slightly smaller roughness scale, about half a kilometer. Um, you know, here's where you can start seeing the effects of, of some of the, the, the younger craters. Again, Finson here shows it appears to be fairly uh, rough on its interior and somewhat in its exterior. Uh, the, the, the very smooth Mare basalts are again apparent, whereas most of the other smooth units that we saw on the previous baseline uh, seem to start disappearing into the background. Um, again, though, much of the interior is similar to what we see in the, in the surrounding highlands. Now, at the final baseline scale, this is a map sort of similar to, to what was in the, uh, the figure that uh, 
that uh, Greg Newman produced, um, the interior of the basin now appears to be fairly smooth at this 115 meter baseline, and several young, or at least rough or, or bright craters are, are, are very apparent. You also see that some of the rays coming either from Jackson or other uh, Copernican age craters show up very clearly. Um, the the, the Shortinger Basin certainly has a, a, a distinct roughness uh, uh, the, uh, characteristic relative to the interior of, of SPA. Um, and it, 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 this scale does appear to be, again, distinct from what we see going on in the, in the highlands. So at least at the, the shorter baselines, SPA does stand out very much uh, compared to, to sort of what we think as being the rougher highlands units. If we combine all these things together into an RGB composite, it starts bringing out, again, we can sort of delineate different, different features. And in the stretch, it doesn't maybe appear so great on the screen here, but those smooth units that uh, I claimed are either um, volcanic units or uh, uh, plains units, they appear as dark here. Uh, in general, the interior of the basin does stand out. And you know, we have this one crater, Finson, here that does appear to be at least rough at the, at the, at the lower scales. If you'll recall for a moment, the, um, the, the, the WAC empirical mosaic, sort of high sun view across the whole surface, since in these craters did not appear to be immature at all. These are probably Aristothenian aged craters. Uh, certainly getting good crater counts of the floors of these craters would help determine their, at least their relative age. But we just don't see that there are many young, fresh craters within the basin, um, even though there are some that are, are fairly, at least rough at the surface. This is, now it's time for the, the joke slide. This is a very beautiful map. And I, you know, I look at these amazing products that the LRO team produces. I think that these are just sort of amazing paintings. These are works of art with happy little mistakes in them. And um, you know, you know, every mistake, there's no mistakes, just happy accidents. But at any rate, now I want to dig a little deeper in to go and look at one area in, in particular. And, and based on Dan Moriarty's upcoming talk, I want to set that up a little bit here. We're going to talk a little bit about what's going on in an area near Mafic Mound. Um, and this brings in some of the work with, uh, with RISE. Uh, based on some of the field experiments that they've been doing out at the 1974 flow in Hawaii uh, using a, a terrestrial LIDAR scanner to get very high resolution point cloud uh, topographic data, I asked uh, Patrick Welly, who's a postdoc at Goddard, well, could you do what you, you know, use the same analytical techniques you use for this field uh, analysis and apply that to the, the NAC DTMs, which are about the two meter scale? Uh, now, this is very preliminary work, but what Patrick does is basically uh, look at a six meter area and calculate the, the roughness from a, of a point cloud uh, across the, you know, these two meter box grids. Um, and so what, we'll, what he does is then produce a standard deviation of the residuals across these uh, points to, to generate a map of roughness. Now, this is, again, not going to be a Bob Ross style artistic interpretation. This is the NAC view at two meters per pixel, and this is this interpolated uh, map of, uh, of roughness. It, you know, some things are starting to, to peer out in here. You get the, the, the very small craters do appear, quote, rough at the, the, the two meter or six meter scale. Um, but in the red areas are places that are fairly smooth. So for instance, the smooth planes are high in homogeneity. They're red. Um, I think what we have to do is look at larger areas in, in different areas. This particular NAC DTM is of the, the, the BABA uh, exterior uh, ejected blanket. Um, and I think one of the things that we need to do is, first of all, request more NAC targets and then just promote for a moment the, uh, the SPA focus group meeting this afternoon where we'll talk about specific targets for uh, future LROC observations. Um, and just to, to tie it all together a little bit, this is uh, views of the schiller shikard area and our friend SPA here. And I, I want to focus on the area, again, right around where um, uh, I was looking with the, the NAC DTM just outside of Baba Crater here. And again, we see these smooth areas. This is at that short baseline uh, roughness scale. And you have these very smooth areas, some of which are likely to be either cryptomari or plains units. And just on a, on a very simple comparison, what we see in schiller shikard the well-known cryptomari, is that, again, in the same baseline, they appear smooth. So I would posit that there are extensive cryptomari deposits within SPA that haven't been mapped yet, haven't been identified. And um, the most relevant thing for, for Dan's upcoming talk is that the area of Mafic Mount is not in one of those smooth areas. It looks to be very rough. Well, rough relative to these smooth areas. Rougher, suggesting that at least it's, it's possibly quite old. Um, we certainly can pull out the Mari basalts and ancient basalts uh, and plains units. Um, and, and I think the mini-RF data integrated with some of these you know, very high-resolution measures of, of surface roughness 
can tell us about what's happening in SPA. Certainly a number of craters that are rocky, but not divine or rocky, with surface centimeter scale blocks sitting at the surface. Yes, and I'm going to wrap it up. But we'll talk more this afternoon at the uh, focus group. And you can ask me your questions then. All right, thank you. Sorry there's no time for questions, but uh, there is a special session in, uh, over lunchtime to talk about uh, SPA.